Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Productions channel here at YouTube and welcome to another Album of the Week video. This is episode number 202. Today's episode I will be putting a spotlight on Dirty Fingers, an album that was supposed to be the late legendary Irish guitar master Gary Moore's second solo album. But due to various reasons that I brought up in my Album of the Week episode on Corridors of Power from last year, it didn't get released until after Corridors, being first released in Japan on July 21st of 1983, to then being released in the United Kingdom in June of 1984, it would eventually be released for the first time in the United States on CD through Road Racer Records, which was the subdivision of Roadrunner Records for a time being there. So with that all said, let's begin. After going through a couple of different incarnations in the 70s after splitting up from his previous band, Skid Row, again, not to be confused with the late 80s, early 90s, and still going to this day, hard rock heavy metal band from the United States that is best remembered for Sebastian Bach. Uh, releasing an album as the Gary Moore Band in 1973 titled Grinding Stone, it sadly flopped. But these days, it has found some new appreciation for what it is than what it kind of was, I guess, in 1973. But due to the poor results of the sales, Gary Moore would briefly join his buddy Phil Linet's band, Thin Lizzy, contributing lead guitar to Nightlife's Still In Love With You track. Eventually, Gary Moore would depart from Thin Lizzy to take another go at going solo. This led to recording of what would become Back In The Streets, which would be released in January of 1979. The lineup for this album would be Phil Linet, who would contribute to three songs, Thin Lizzy drummer Brian Downey, who also would contribute to three songs, ex Judas Priest and future Michael Schenker group drummer Simon Phillips, who would contribute to three so different songs, keyboardist Don Airy, who would contribute to three songs, and future Barbara Streisand session musician John Mole, who would contribute to two songs. With the album being produced by the late Chris Sangerides, but because of this album, it would lead to Gary Moore rejoining Thin Lizzy and thus lead to the iconic Black Rose, a rock legend album which came out the same year of 1979. After release of that album, again, the Thin Lizzy album, Gary Moore would leave Thin Lizzy again but still having a working relationship with Phil Linet whenever he needed him, which would, again, who would sporadically collaborate with Moore on several occasions. By 1980, Gary Moore would change up the lineup before recording of what would become Dirty Fingers, keeping keyboardist Don Airy, but this time gaining at the time current Ted Nugent singer Charlie Hunn, Ex Rainbow and future Dio bass player Jimmy Bain and drummer for a thousand bands, Tommy Aldridge. <laughs> Anybody should get that, given the, the track record for Tommy Aldridge. With Chris Sangerides reprising his producer duties for the final time, though, Dirty Fingers would be recorded. However, at the same time, Gary Moore was focused on another formation of his at the time, that is the very slick AOR sounds of G-Force. And because of Gary Moore being focused on completing the G-Force album, which was at the time, he would, when he was starting up G-Force, like I mentioned in my Album of the Week episode on Corridors of Power, he started G-Force as a, a way to collaborate initially with Glenn Hughes. However, Glenn Hughes decided to back out of the G-Force project and therefore it just became another just another project whatever for Gary Moore then. 
Gary Moore, though, would neglect on completing his second album, Dirty Fingers, thus shelving the album for a while there. However, Jet Records, the label that Gary Moore was signed to at the time, would release a three-track, 12-inch single in 1981 containing Nuclear Attack, which would at the time be eventually be re-recorded with Greg Lake of Emerson, Lake & Palmer fame for his debut solo album, which Gary Moore would contribute to. Uh, then, of course, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood and Run To Your Mama. But after the surprise success of Corridors of Power, Dread Records would cash in on the success by finally releasing Dirty Fingers to the public in both 1983 and 1984. So here we go. Featuring 10 tracks of pure raw, heavy rock and roll, clocking in at the length of 41 minutes and 35 seconds. So these 10 tracks are, well, beginning with Hiroshima or Hiroshima, as it's pronounced in the song. Uh, the title track, which is actually a short one minute and nine second instrumental, which is just again just Gary Moore just shredding a, uh, just shredding his butt off on this song. Then of course this leads into the track "Bad News." Then "Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood," which is a cover track. Actually, let me see real quick. I think uh, I've got it uh, the Wikipedia page here. It was actually a song that was written for Nina Simone, and Gary Moore decided to cover the song for the album here, "Nuclear Attack." Kidnapped, Really Gonna Rock Tonight, Lonely Nights, and then finally ending with Rest in Peace. So there you go, folks. There's your 10 tracks. As much as I like his other albums like Corridors of Power and Victims of the Future, however, Dirty Fingers has pretty much become my favorite Gary Moore album. It is loaded with cool, powerful guitar riffs, shredding solos, and bombastic fury. Gary Moore sounds like a man possessed on this album, with Tommy Aldridge pouring every bit of his heart and soul into these songs. Just listen to the explosive Hiroshima, the hard as nails of nuclear attack, and the wild spirit of the generic song title here, Really Gonna Rock Tonight. But besides the aforementioned heavy hitters, there is some softer sides to this album. With the Nina Simone cover, Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, and the heartfelt power ballad of Rest in Peace, which has Gary Moore taking over the vocal duties here, and it's just giving out a solid performance. Uh, just great stuff here, again, he just puts his heart into the song. This is such a great album. It smokes from start to finish. I wish this would get another reissue on CD. Trying to obtain a CD copy these days is ridiculous. I am not paying 50 bucks for a CD copy. I just hope that Rock Candy can just work on getting the rights to this phenomenal album. After this, Gary Moore would release Victims of the Future in 1984 and would continue releasing albums, even partaking on that year's Monsters of Rock Festival with Accept, Motley Crue, Lion T, and Ozzy Osbourne with ACDC as the headliner. So there you have it, folks. By July, this album would reach its 40th anniversary, even if it was originally recorded in 1980. So for those who has cut their teeth onto this classic, you can leave your thoughts, whether they be positive or negative, you can leave them in the comments section below. But if you haven't already listened to this album, Go and listen to it. It's on YouTube, or maybe by some chance you find this album out in the wild, even if it's on vinyl or CD. It's worth grabbing. So with that, this is Heavy Thrash saying I'm out, and I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone.